So let's get started finally. While we're on the topic, let me go ahead and link the Warlock Discord for those that are not in it. One second, stand by, stand by, stand by. Well, first things first and foremost, uh, what are you eating right now, Crix? Is I it mean, good? My, my, Is it my wife, yeah, sorry, it's dinner time right now. I've had a hectic weekend. My wife made meatballs and like rice or some shit. Pretty good. Just fucked up the cameras again, of course. Okay, we're good to go. Make, All right, guys. Let's not make any, uh, any jokes about Crix's meatballs. That is the Warlock Discord, guys. If you guys are not in it, please join it. It's amazing. People, that's where we all hail from. Um, so that's where you'll find all this information that when we start going off of, you know, numbers and sims and shit, Rye or the JPain are the ones who handle that. It's a, it's a well put together server. We all spend a lot of time in there helping out everybody. The, the whole point of this is just to help everybody out, right? We're going to do a parse guide this today, this week, but then we waited on it. That's going to be next week. It's going to be an hour-ish long episode specifically tailored, uh, get it, tailored around gearing. Tailored around gearing, all right? Uh, we'll go over each slot, each head slot, you know, quick gems and stuff like that. Or each slot of armor and say what you can get out of T4, what you should be using for each. We'll cover each spec. And, uh, yeah, let's get into it, bro. So how are you guys doing? Back to you guys. You guys have a good week? Right? Yeah, dude. You have a good show? Yeah. Are you guys yeah. ready for this? Yeah. You guys excited? You got some nuggets for the boys today? I got some, some little stuff. gems. Oh, oh, happy meal, really, man. Okay, well, I can jump straight right into it then. You ready? Let's do it. Let's do it. We, can over, yeah. we can go over gems just really quick, just because people ask us a lot, and uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and start it with saying, meta, this is the only meta gem you're gonna use pretty much the entire game. That's kind of we all know that right now. This is the reason why we're using T4 helm and not spell strike, right? Um, you're the, yeah, you can use one of these. This for, I use these for blue sockets all the time. You can only use one because they're unique. So go find one, slap in your blue socket. Otherwise, you gotta use your blue socket with this one. I say blue socket because if you're running like frozen shadowy, that's a blue and a yellow, and you need it for the three hit rating on the on the socket bonus. That's what you use, and then you just socket your hit. It's common sense. We've all done this before. I'm just doing it for those who happen to have not known. If you need a lot of hit, you're using Great Dawnstone. If you don't need that much hit, you're using Veiled. If you don't need any hit, you're using nine spell damage. You guys want to chime in on that at all? No, that's uh, that's pretty fair. Pretty simple. Like, yeah, pretty simple. I, pretty straightforward. I yeah, I personally love doing, uh, love using the Great Dawnstone because uh, because I'm a cheapskate, and then my server up until <laughs> up until very recently, people just didn't have any issue, any idea of good was and you know technically it's also the, one of the best gem that we have I think slightly better than veil but you know you reduce a little bit your uh, your uh, re reusability of uh, of gear especially for yeah. trash packs but mm -hmm. i mean it's not that big of a deal especially in t4 because there's not that many trash i agree also, I oh sorry finish sorry just just finish on the on the hit for the there are some nice green gems to uh, to set up to to activate the meta gems that give like five hit and like stamina or MP5, yeah. which you can also use just to to activate it if you still need a little bit to get it over the edge. Well, if you if you need the double blue socket, that is the best gem, like the best estimated DPS value gem that you can use. But touching on why those are good and touching on why Great Dawnstone is good is. I've seen a lot of warlocks just even expecting like inspecting people on my server and a lot of warlocks seem to think that uh their default go-to gem if they're not gemming for the socket bonus is the rune living ruby which is actually wrong uh if you look at the estimated values of like spell power versus hit rating if you're not hit capped hit cap uh hit rating is worth about 1.9 it depends on your gear depends on your raid scenario etc etc but let's say that your fire spec near phase one bis and you're not hit cap then hit rating is worth about and again it depends on your your values but about 1.95 dps and spell power is worth about 1.01 dps so you can see that hit rating is worth roughly 90 percent more than uh than what one spell power is so if you were to look at like great dawnstone or even veiled noble topaz they come out better than rune living ruby if you're just looking to fill the slot without going for any color bonus or anything like that and i agree with ryu say that great dawnstone is really really good however if we were to go for filling with great dawnstone or filling with veiled noble topaz personally i like to fill my slots my uh non-socket bonus slots with veiled noble topaz more flexibility in the items that I get to choose because uh, if you're filling with great dawnstone you reach hit cap at such a fast rate even if you're even if you're trying to specifically not get hit items on your best in slot gear setup 
you still end up getting hit rating eventually anyway because just a lot of the best gear has hit rating on it even if you try to not go for hit double hit rating rings or single hit rating ring or anything like that so me personally great dawnstone and veiled noble topaz i feel like dps value they're very similar but i feel like veiled noble topaz depending on what gear you have is slightly more flexible thank you for chiming in that much i really appreciate that i never even thought about that too that's good uh, jp anything you got to say about this the gyms i know it's just gyms but just in case uh jimmy wise so i think a lot of people are like oh i'm gonna wait to use chaotic skyfire diamond until i get tier 4 helm because it has a meta slot blah 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 i can tell you right now i'm not using tier 4 helm and i'm still using a meta i'm using some blue out of architraz in canner's helm just because it has a meta slot right your meta slot is the pretty much the highest dps you can put into your character at this point in the game like no gear no one piece of gear is better than that meta gem you equip so prioritizing that meta gem is more important than waiting for tier 4 helm to get the meta wow. gem just want to make sure everyone knows piggyback that. off that i actually in this recent video i did on this exact slide slide don't worry about putting it until t4 so i'm glad you cleared that up thank you appreciate that well That's i smart. so if That's from a I tell you guys, these are the guys to go to bro these are the guys i go to for everything so well, I don't know. They're two, three hundred gold. Last time I yeah. checked, if you don't want to, if you don't want to spend the gold, of course, yeah. you know, wait well, for tier four helm. But I don't think you need to. You should not. If you have the gold, you should be using a meta gem whenever, whenever uh, possible. I think. I think. So go go ahead, that life. Well, I was just gonna say. I I think it just depends on how committed the person is into improving your character. But if right. you're playing any spec, any spec that has the ruin talent, which is pretty much all the specs other than ua and deep demo if you have ruin just spend the 200 gold you can farm mm -hmm. 200 gold in like what an hour and a half and it's yeah. just such a, such a high value gem if you have ruin whatsoever and i don't know about you guys in chat but my guild has been super unlucky on warlock tokens since we've been clearing since week one and we're even doing splits right and we've only seen one shoulder token for warlocks and one chest token and i think like one or two helmet tokens and we have five Kara groups so i wouldn't just say oh you know i'm gonna wait till next week it'll drop for sure i'm gonna wait till next week it'll drop <laughs> that's how that's that sounds like you're sniffing some copium to me so yeah, yeah that's how you do uh never wait never do that. for six weeks yeah. straight. well you should also never in your life coming from a raid leader's perspective or officer perspective gm whatever you should never ever be like yo i'm not gonna do this because i know i'm gonna get one from raid like yeah. unless you're literally like oh hey Crix, you're next in line for fucking school, good and don't worry about it, then that's something different. But if you're like, you're running four or five Warlocks, bro, you don't know when you're going to get it, you should never go into it. It's a, it's a bad look on your point, too. That makes, like, a raid that not want to give you loot if you're just being lazy because you don't want to get something because you're expecting for something to raid, so don't do that. Yeah, also, funnily enough, I've seen some uh, some Warlock, like, go, oh, yeah, I'm just going to make Spell Strike while waiting for, uh, for tier 4, and, like, no, man, just... Take any kind of uh, blue, like take Oblivion or even take the uh, the badger one or whatever, and just slap the gem on it. It's Bro, you can get the fucking like, uh, spirit it's shard one. It's five times cheaper. It's five, seven, seven mm -hmm. times cheaper. Why the fuck yeah. are you doing spell strike? Mm -hmm. You're not yeah. saving yourself money by just making a spell strike helmet. Yeah, spell I mean. <laughs> Anyone wearing spell strike helm right now has uh, made a bad decision. Well, here's the well, here's the deal. We're gonna get there because we have a head slot. Yeah. Let's not flame them yet. But yeah. I do want to say, uh, Jordan, uh, Jordan is asking, is there a raid bots for Classic? There's nothing like raid bots, but there's sims simulations that you can run. It's a little more hassle than raid bots. It's not as easy as just pressing a button. But if you look in the Warlock Discord in the sim spreadsheet, you'll be able to find them. And if someone just linked one right above us, actually, if you want to link that again, whoever linked that. I think I just linked Oh, I see it. I, I see can, it. I I see can, it. Can, yeah. yeah, spam oh. that. So, this, this is a new... I don't know if it's a new sim. Okay. But if Rai and JP are the sim guys, and if they're saying this is legit, then I trust them. All right. After yeah. gyms? Consumables, we're not going to go into it. I, I just want to express the fact that it's consumables are important. Just real quick. If I, you're a fire death show, don't show up the raid without flame caps. If you're just a piece of shit, just don't do it. You need it. If you're demo, you should have Kibler's bits and scrolls of Agi and strength at all times or don't be demo, right? As for your mana pots and Desher pots, go ahead, guys. You guys go right over there. Let's see what you guys say. Mana just pot versus mm -hmm. Desher pot. We touched on it last week, but mm -hmm. I'll go over it again quick real talk, quick. Yeah. Mana pot is always better than Destro pot if it saves you a stationary life tap and you can use all of that mana that you gained from the life tap before movement is forced. Right now, to be honest, there is not a lot of fights where you should be mana potting. Uh, High King, not long enough for you to mana pot, most likely. 
gruel, you should be tapping as much as you feel comfortable while spreading, so you get a lot of mana there. Uh, gruel is the only fight I see potentially you could maybe I'm use a mana pot. Yeah, yeah that that is that is the only fight right now where I think you could mana pot is gruel. Because life tapping during spreading can be a little bit scary, right? You don't want to life tap and then take 4k damage and die. But uh, mag, for example, almost you should never, unless you're stacking the adds and seeding them at the start, mm -hmm. You should not be mana potting because you should be at 100% mana every time an earthquake happens, and that mana should last you until the next one. Yeah, I, mean, I could. I mean, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say I I completely agree with J Paint. Like my guild personally, we we've been experimenting with the three two stacking method on Mag and even the four one, and uh, let's say we don't pop Lust on the on the ads. We're we're only popping drums. I think mana pot if you're seeding is just 100% the way to mm -hmm. go. However. Mm -hmm. For mag in specific, you have a built-in mechanic that just gives you the most optimal time to cast life type, and that's the the knockup when he's trying to do the blast wave. You can fit like maybe a con flag or a shadow burner, depends on what spec you are, but you can fit in one to two instant casts, get them on cooldown, and then you still have plenty of time to get three or four life types off even after you've done those instant casts, which means you have plenty of time to pump and dump all your damage between the knockups. And then you should be getting close to Oom by the time the next one comes, giving you another window to life tap for basically no DPS yeah, loss at all. That, that's something we're going to yeah. talk about next week on the parsing mm -hmm. episode and stuff. But just know for now, usually a Destro pot right now, unless you really know what you're doing mm -hmm. with the mana pot. Most people are going to gain more right now from using a Destro pot on cooldown just because not everyone manages their life taps efficiently. Destro pot's just going to be better. Yeah, uh, Actually... Yeah. Actually, so, everyone in Craig's chat is a uh, warlock expert, so oh, they yeah, know what they're yeah, doing. Yeah, that's yeah. true, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. 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 I honestly think though, right, right now, maybe Gruul, for, 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 a, for a standard, for like most of, uh, most of the time, maybe Gruul you can see uh, you can see some use out of man pot, but yeah, otherwise Destro pot. Which is sad because, you know, of course they're like 10 times more expensive than the mana pot, but you know. I love mana pots, bro. I fucking chomp on them. I would get used to using them because T5, T6, Sunwell, baby. Woo! Oh, you be yeah. loving those mana pods, bro. The mana pods are nice. At first, you don't like them because you're like, it's not damage, but it's nice. Um, Next section, go to Fire Risk Gear. We're not going to go over an entire Warlock tanking part of this, but for those that don't know, there's a tank in SSC. Uh, usually the second boss, whatever whatever way you go, but typically the second one you're going to is Leo Terra Supply. You need a Warlock to tank it, and he has to be Cat Fire Res Gear. Um, this isn't all the gear, but the reason that we're bringing this is up because this is a badge farm. Uh, you need 100 badges for these. This is something I suggest every warlock get. Even if you, if 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 I'm the if I am the main I am the main like warlock tank for blind in my guild. If I get hit by a bus tomorrow and it's raid night, I'm not going to be there. So they need someone else to step up and do that. And more times than not, on every private server I've ever been on, every guild I've ever been, there's one fire res warlock, and then there's nobody else who can do it. And then you guys are just like, oh, we can't do Leo Theris this week. Or we're stacking hunters, or we're doing some weird shit. So, if you have the time, if you got, if you don't have the time, don't worry about it. But if you're just, if you're one of those guys, no life in this game, like we are, like you got time to play games, you got all your out, you got off hands, you got your icons. I would suggest starting and saving up these badges to get these pieces and help your guild out. And this is also a good thing if you're kind of like trying to earn your spot, maybe for lack of a better word, you're over there trying to like really show off a little bit to your raid leader, trying to like show out, show up with this, bro. Link them these, and you'll you'll sound a little good. There's some green pieces we'll go over at some point. It's just not, I just yeah. want to bring it up real quick and see what you guys thought. Also to note, on the fire rays, the the attune for the eye, you know, the attune question, between the Cypher of Damnation and, you know, the the whole Macteridon killing thing, you get a good neck that's 24 and a ring that's, once again, another mm -hmm. 20 plus fire rays, which mm -hmm. is, obviously you'll have that before tier 5, so that helps a lot as well. Yep. And also the green, you, you fill in the red, you, you need 365, including your fail hunter or as, uh, you know, shadow prot and all that. Uh, so just do the math. This is 200 item bad at math, so I'm not going to do it for you guys. But you can just go get greens. Literally, they're cheap right now. They might go up a little bit maybe later, but they're pretty cheap. And also this, this is, this is with use, whoopsies. Cool. Going to fuck that up. All right. Just going to keep fucking it up. This is also with, um, oh shit. How'd I get back to that? This is all, oh, there it is. This is also with, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? On private servers, you need 365. You might not need 365 if the game is much easier. So that's another thing to think of. We'll know when we do some raid testing, though. Yeah, well, talking that up again. I don't know. To me, I would say to my guild, like, yeah, 
I can definitely farm 100 badges. That's no problem. I can tank it, no problem. You know, no big deal. But uh, when those sea witches' vestments drop, you know, <laughs> just just remember yeah. who was there for the guild. You, you guys feel me? I mean, if you have a warlock, warlock in a guild, bro, that's smart. If you're a warlock I mean, in a guild, you got a lot of warlocks in there, unless there's like an officer warlock or a GM warlock who typically gets them first, like, show out and get that, bro. Just show completely balls out and did it. It's different on private servers because this is already out after like a month instead of having three or four months to do this. We still got like two plus months, guys, to get to get this. So it's just get some badges and get it. Run it. We got a new trinket you guys need to, some of you guys might not know you need to get that you're going to need to get as well. So hold off for a little bit. We'll talk about that when we get to the trinkets. It's actually not on the slides. I know you guys know what I'm talking about, but yeah. essence. Yeah, I just forgot to put on the slides. Which I really wish I did. Anyway, we'll talk. We'll talk about it. Yeah. Okay, before we get into the gear again, just over tier four. We don't need to go over each piece. We just want to talk about how Im the importance of T4. Like, it's kind of common sense that you like T4. Like, uh, this is going to be a little spicier for all of us because I don't agree with some of the things that Ryan and them think. Um, but they're right, usually. So, you know, but we know two T or T4 is very important for two piece. You should be prying your two piece immediately as soon as you can. I don't care. Even if it's like legs, shoulders, and you have spell strike, just use that until you can get another one and then drop it for spell strike and so on and so forth. Um, it, T4 is very, very important for us. The, t the, the two pieces, the 135 spell damage for whatever, I mean, shadow or fire. And then even the four set, which at first glance looks like it's kind of garbage, but for demo and affliction, that's kind of nice. I like the four set for that, for demo affliction, increase your duration by corruption and emo by three seconds, which then allows you to have to reapply that dot less often, right? Because it gets extended, which means you're spamming more shadow bolts or incinerates or whatever you're, you so choose. What do you guys think? Chime in, baby. Who wants to start? Ryu? I sure. know you. I know you did a big type up. So uh, lay sure. it on us. Sure, sure. So yeah, first thing first, two set. We uh, we all know it's really good. So it's about twenty to twenty five DPS ish, pretty much. But you know, it's pretty good because when it procs, it's actually fairly chunky. So you can just pretty pretty much add uh, add cooldowns on top of that, and you know, it it helps to uh, to compound things, but. On the four set, so that's fairly uh, that's actually fairly interesting. As Crick said, the fact that it uh, it increases the direction of the dots that you have makes that means that you're spamming more shadow bolt. And the thing is, for affliction and for demonology, both of these specs are actually using both dots, both corruption and immolation, because as opposed to destruction, which basically kind of only use immolates. So they do get the full bonus of it. So let me get a little bit of the of the nitty gritty. That basically the idea is that you're gaining like from emulates, you're basically going from like four casts per minute to three and a third, and for from corruption, you're getting like from you know three and a third cast, three point three cast per minute to about two point eight cast per minute, about. And uh, just this save time, if you assume that you reinvest all in Shadow Bolt, which, you know, you might not entirely be doing because life tap or downtime or whatever, but if you reinvest everything into Shadow Bolt on a fully raid buff setting, and, uh, you know, with all the proper synergies and everything, on the average damage of a Shadow Bolt, you're actually looking at, uh, at the four-piece bonus that gives you around 40 dps so nearly double what the two piece gives you which you know obviously it's in a vacuum but it's huge so we don't really uh like shouldn't really sleep on it much that said it's mostly for affliction and demonology because natively natively they use those two spells for destruction the picture is a little bit more muddled so if you only use immolate theoretically it's about the same as the two-piece bonus, but the problem is it's an opportunity cost. So the idea is that, of course, you have better, better slots for better gear to use in the slots where you use the third and the fourth piece. So it's not that good. And also, as, as I mentioned, you know, if you life tap and everything, on average, the effect is that decreases. That said, for Shadow Destro specifically, if you have four piece, it actually adds corruption back into your rotation, even though it has a two second cast time. So that's something fairly interesting and uh, needs to be kept in mind. And the idea is that, yeah, if you add the corruption back into the rotation, it decreases the variance 
that kind of like increases the average. So if you want to go for the top top pars, the best strat is still like spam shadow bolt and hope to get lucky. But generally speaking, you have better, uh, you start having better results having in corruption, and it helps because it alleviates a little bit of the turret aspect of Destro having a second dot running. It just feels like cancer casting it, of course. Two second cast time. Of course, yeah. I personally would never run four set of shadow destro. I don't I'd rather run like in this situation, like I am in that situation. I don't run four piece, I run two I run four shadowy robe shoulders. So with I, my two set being gloves and crown, I'd rather do that. There's a few things I'd like to add. Um you would probably run this as DN as well. Yeah. Because you yeah. keep up corruption as DN oh, yeah. and you keep up immolate. And on top of that, although this is obviously very, very minor but on top of that, that extra tick of corruption is just another chance to proc Nightfall. And even in like a multi-dot type of scenario, like if you're multi-dotting Magtheridon phase one, like let's say you're not stacking and seeding. You, you guys have them spread out and you're going for the multi-dot type method. Having that extra tick before your dots expire is really actually quite nice. Now, there are a lot of variables that I'd like to point out about this four piece that Ryu kind of started to touch on. So... This four piece, it does gain value because it allows you to cast more Shadow Bolts. Uh, you gain about 1.75 seconds of a Shadow Bolt cast every minute that you have this. But that 1.5, uh, 1.75 seconds that you're gaining is only if you're assuming that you're managing your dots perfectly. You're reapplying your dots at the perfect time. You don't have any, you're not clipping them. You're not, uh, you know, clicking on a cube on Magtheridon or positioning yourself after a ground slam shatter on Gruul's Lair or something like that. And it loses value if you let your dots fall off and stay off for three, four, or five seconds because you're doing a mechanic. Then it loses value. On top of that, not only does it lose value if you're doing a mechanic and you can't just reapply your dot immediately, but the fast, the better your guild gets, the faster your kill time is going to be, and the faster your kill time is on any specific boss, the le the less amount of value that this is going to generate because it's more of a, a time-based generator. So I think that the four piece is good. Uh, you know, for me, for example, as Demo, I'm going to be rocking the four piece because the tier pieces, you know, have a nice amount of stam intellect. You know, it's what Demo wants. It's nice. But there are a lot, a lot of variables. So if you're not good at managing your dots, maybe don't go for it. If you uh, if you have a lot of jobs like you're doing multiple banishes on phase one or if you have multiple Curse of Tongues or anything like that, maybe don't go for it. And on top of that, if you have like a super fast kill time on High King Mulgar and you're going for like a top world parse or something like that, this is not the set bonus that you want to go for during a speed kill. Yeah, no, I agree with all that for sure uh like you said for a speed kill probably not the way you want to run you just want to cast incinerate cast shadow bolt that'll be crit right uh i just want to touch on again how well actually you know what because if you think about like a 15 16 17 maybe like a 20 second kill there's nothing bad to put corruption up as your tanks you know the tanks running in there you can put a corruption up and that corruption yeah but we, we seconds, can talk maybe? about that later but you should yeah. be pre-casting soul fire shadow yeah. bolt something so you know you don't really but uh, we'll talk about that next week. But uh, mm -hmm. I just wanted to reiterate how big the tier four two piece bonus is. It mm -hmm. is we're looking at like twenty five to thirty percent uptime on it, which means anywhere from thirty five to forty five spell power equiv equivalency. So like priming that is huge, right? Like for me, I have tier four. All I have, I think, right now is tier four pants. I don't have tier four helm. But say I got tier four helm tomorrow. You're getting dick. I would I would throw on tier four helm and I would throw on my tier four legs and lose spell strike because that's a DPS gain for me to lose spell strike. That's how good the tier four mm -hmm. and two set piece is. It is extremely strong. You should prio it. It even it usually comes out to like if you're breaking spell fire for it, it usually like if you're just maybe replacing gloves, it comes out as a bonus to run two like to break spell fire and to run two piece. So it's just something to sim, something to keep in mind. Two pieces huge. Okay. All right. Thank you, gentlemen, for your input. Now we can go on to the slots. Now this is going to be more, less of like where I go, hey, head, what do you guys think? Uh, Ryan, J Paint, I already know what to do with the shadow side. We have Demo side over here with live, and they play fire. I don't know fire. 
I know if I, when I have a fire question, I'm not kidding. If I have a question, I literally go ask them about fire. Like, yo, what is this for fire? And they have to tell me. So, we're just gonna go up the head slots. And uh, it's out like right away is T4 helm. You're, you're, you should be going into phase two with your T4 helm. Like, there's like we just went over tier four, the meta socket, everything in this is 100% what you should be doing. Um, that's it. Like, there's not, and then spell strike. And I know it's so confusing because every guy in the world said to run spell strike, and I even got shit in the comments for it. But like, guys, we didn't know that meta gym was going to be in there. Nobody knew it wasn't supposed to be in the game yet. So that's why everybody said spell strike. If you are one of those people who do not have crown and you crafted spell strike, then don't worry because spell strike is still really, really good. Like, you can still run spell strike and be fine until you get your crown. I don't know about crafting it, waiting for it, unless you're just like, know that you're you're running 12 Warlocks, you're never going to get it. Um, uh, yeah, if you're, Helm is if you're right going to run Spell Strike right now, you're better off, you know, getting like the Hood of Oblivion or the Encanter's Cowl or the even the Badge Helm and putting the Chaotic Skyfire Diamond in it. Mm -hmm. There's no real reason to craft Spell Strike. If you haven't crafted it at this point, don't ever. Yep. It, it, it just don't. Nope. And if you're looking for an alternative, uh, I mean, this goes for Fire Dish as well. That's why I'm just not going to. There was not, we're not going to spend too much time in the headstock because we've already talked about T4 in the metasocket a lot. Uh, I mean, this one from Nether Spider is a good one to wear if you don't have anything else. If you look at the stats, it's fine. It's just missing sockets, right? It's missing a meta, it's missing sockets. It looks like a spell strike without sockets. So if you, this is a perfect placeholder until you get this, right? But it's also from Karazhan. So if you're not getting T4 Helm because you're in Gar you're not going to Karazhan, you're kind of burnt, right? But this is this is just good. We're only listing it because it is a T4 thing and it is pretty good. It's just not as good as T4. I mean, and yeah, just just like Japen said, just take a blue. Chuck the meta gem in, call it a day. Honestly, even like just farm a few more badges, take the take the helm, done. Yep. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Even that works. On to the oh. next. Go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say on top Wait. of also farming badges for the fire resist gear, of course. Mm -hmm. Of course. Of course. Well, one, one sec quickly. I see a yeah, question in the chat that says affliction for helm. They don't care about the meta gem as much. So real quick, the answer is yes, they do. I, lo I know a lot of people think that Affliction kind of like doesn't have anything to do with crit, but think about it this way. You're still spending 65 to 70% of your time casting Shadow Bolt, and there's improved Shadow Bolt in the mix. So, yes, you, you like crit. You still like crit, and, mm -hmm. you know, the meta gem. You gotta remember, at this point in the game, you're not running UA. Like, you're, like yeah. the usage of Affliction UA is so small, is much smaller than people think. Like, I get questions of when they should switch from UA to SM Ruin, and they're, like, fully tailor geared, like, you know, 20% crit, wondering if it's time to go to SM Ruin. I'm like, bro, I would have went to SM Ruin fucking week, day four. Like, I hit 70 and I got a little bit of gear. I'm already SM Ruin. And as SM Ruin, you're spamming Shadow Bolt still. You just get to put dots up. And so you still the crit. So. Especially yeah. with CSD being in the game. Like, maybe things might, you might wait a little bit longer if CSD wasn't in the game. But That's what I was now say. that we know Chaotic Skyfire Diamond's in the game, grab Ruin and just pump. That's what I was going to say. The fact that chaotic was in the game pretty much threw ua out the window right away it can still compete if, if you really like the game style the gameplay like you can play it but yeah, uh, I, I, yeah. you can play it but it, you're gonna be less than sm ruin by a significant amount yes it's not, yeah, ua and sm ruin are not close yeah it's just for just really just for movement and mechanics like you know if uh just just really uh, if you want to, to take advantage of the of the Design of the encounters on Macteris and Grow, maybe UA like can can work because you know there's a lot of downtime. But geez, yeah, generally speaking, you should be SM ruin most uh, most of the times. Anything else for Ned head boys? No, I think. Any head as we go through these sections, I guess you just you guys, if you have questions, can put one in there, and then like say we go to Neck, and I see the head question, we'll go back and answer it, so we don't have to do it at the end. But up to you guys. Think. Uh, we're going to we Neck. Oh, I was just going to say, I think we can sum up the whole head topic by just get a meta socket. Yep. Get a meta socket until you can get T4. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's where I faulted on this. I should have maybe added that too. I didn't. This is why I got my boys here, man. I'm not perfect. All right. We're the next. I'm just going to speak for um, Ritson because I love Ritson's Lost Pendant. That is my favorite neck in the world of the game. If I could keep it forever, I would keep it forever. I use it as Affliction, DN, Shadow Destro. I like it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um... I'll let you guys chime in on the fire side over here, or on any of the next period. But go try, go ahead. Uh, so for fire, you're obviously not using Ristons, right? Because mm -hmm. you know, plus shadow damage. But your other options are obviously Adornment of Stone Souls or Brutes, right? You can wear either of them. Whichever one you get first, whichever one you roll on first and you win, that's the one you should wear. 
some people say, oh, well, Brooch is so much better because you get 15 hit on it, blah, blah, blah. Well, when you, if you get Brooch, you're good, right? But if you get a Dormant and you have no hit on your neck, then just throw hit on one of your rings. Like, there is... You're not locked into one bis list that you see online, right? There is seven, eight, nine ways to gear that will, uh, like, give you within five DPS of each other, right? For sure, there's one single bis list, but... There's so many different pieces of gear that are so close and different setups that are so close. Whichever one you get at these first for Fire Destro is the one you should wear. I totally agree. I mean, yes, that if you were to look at just the DPS estimated value in a vacuum between Adornment and Brooch, Brooch comes out ahead if you can use the hit rating, because if you add the estimated value of the hit rating plus the spell power, it's just more estimated DPS value than Adornment of Souls. But the issue is, is can you effectively use that hit rating, especially if you're using like Veiled Noble Topazes for your gemming and things like that. And most oftentimes, if you run Brooch of Unquenchable Fury, you're easily going to go over hit cap if you're pushing near Biss. So just like Jay Payne said, it really just depends on what items you have. Yes, there might be like an ultimate simulated perfect best in slot list, but you might not reach that, especially with Warlocks being one of the main classes that you see in TBC raids. You know, you have to share your loot with a lot of people, so by the time the next phase of content comes out, you might not have the dream best in slot list. So mm -hmm. you kind of need to just go with the flow and kind of gear towards what you currently have and what you know you might have priority on going into the future. And both of the necklaces can be plenty fine. And just to piggyback off that, I like so, so someone asked about Shadow Destro. I love Shadow Destro. I mean, I know it's not the everyone's favorite, but I like all right, that's my go-to, right? Um, I still I used to always prefer wrist loss pendant over that for the shadow damage. However, we, the, we have a lot of warlocks. We run like eight or nine warlocks in our main raid, but we split. But like in our main raid, we'll be. I like a dormant of soul and souls because of the crit for ISB. I like I like that crit strike rating more than I like that hit rating. Obviously, so, like they said, whichever one you get, use. It boils down to if you have, do you need hit or do you need crit, right? But like preferably, I like a dormant of souls just because of the crit strike. Wrist is good. Go ahead, for for Shadow Destro, you're talking a dormant of soul and souls is like yeah. two DPS better. It, okay. it is there better because mm -hmm. I mean know. that twenty intellect gives you almost a fourth of a crit to plus mm -hmm. the crit there rating you, you gain. So your equivalent spell power in Ristins is probably like I don't know fifty. I'm just spitballing probably like fifty three, fifty four. Whereas your other one is obviously fifty one, and you obviously gain your immolate damage from adornment too rather than just losing all that damage on your emulate from Ristens. Yeah, and just to go off that again, is the problem with the, the thing that I have with Ristens is I'm a, sh I'm a Shadow Warlock, like not Destro, but like all the versions of Shadow, whatever the specs are. And I have three spells of Shadow Weaves, that's Shadow Damage. I have a Neck, that's Shadow Damage. And then what if you run Orb, that's another Shadow Damage. Just a bunch of Shadow Damage for a spec that you're keeping up emulate. I don't like having that much Shadow Damage because that's that's a lot of damage that your emulates are missing on. You might as well keep it up at that point. Like So I like having like I have frozen shadow weave right so that's three shadow pieces okay I like to have my offhand and my neck not be shadow but that's just like personal preference but you know I mean you you might not get to a threshold where where you it's not useful to cast stimulate I think it's about th more than 300 uh, yeah it's shadow oh, damage it's, but it's, you still don't want to gimp to emulate yeah. for no reason at all especially since like these are good alternatives but yeah back on the neck completely agree with that uh, with what, whatever was said basically take the first but drops in your lap and it itemize around it like they're, they're all very good options honestly you can't really go wrong uh next going out balling out what's next got some shoulders well there's nothing too fucking crazy here p4 shoulders shocker yep. like it's yep. one of those slots where i only have frozen shadow we listed here as a backup like there's nothing to be said here. You want these? Like these are proud to you guys. I know it's kind of like I like shoulders are. We only have like one drop in our raid. Alive, you know, it's RNG obviously, but Alive hasn't seen them. This this is what you want. You still have two months to get it, right? In the meantime, I'm using never seen one shoulders just because I have them. If you're yeah, fire destro, I don't know. If you're fire destro, I don't want to use mantle or torn heart or something like that. But it's oh, you can. You, just, I'm it. using uh, in while waiting. I'm actually using managed pauldrons. Managed, okay. Like they're, they're, they're just they're okay. You like that you know. better than Torn Heart? Soldiers of the Torn Heart in the mana? I mean, mantle? They're about the same, right? right. Yeah, they're, they're about the same. Like, it's just that I got them, so um, just, I was like, yeah, might as well use them because I uh, don't really have that good some, spot. Something to touch on here from just like a loot perspective. If some for some reason you're in a guild where you're running Shadow and Fire Warlock, say like two and two, 
uh, Fire Warlock should 100% be prior this the tier Mantle? four shoulders. I agree with yeah, you. Be yeah, because fire, fire basically has to run Helm shoulders mm -hmm. two piece, right? Whereas, and they have no other option that's None. even close to good, right? Mm. And whereas Shadow Locks have Frozen Shadow Weave, right? So that's just something to consider. As Fire Destro, you really, really, really want these. As Shadow Destro, they're a big upgrade, but not as much as they are yeah. for Fire Destro. They're a big Destro. upgrade, but these Frozen Shadow Weave shoulders cost like $27 to make. or so, I mean, 27 gold to make. Like, it's so cheap. Not really, but it's like the cheapest one to make. Eight fucking Shadow Claws. Yeah. Like. yeah. Yeah. yeah, five fire just has the least flexibility, basically, to sum yep. it up. Yeah, yeah, but there's nothing much more here. I mean, get tier four yep. shoulders. Uh, yeah, so we're gonna spend too much time here. So uh, I need to go do something with my wife because she's staring at me. So I'm gonna let you guys talk about the cloaks here. I'll just chime in and say that this is a world boss cloak that many of us won't get. So don't cry if you don't get it. But if you got it, I hate you. Be right back. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. So about cloaks. Well, let's let's discard the world boss one, but. Uh, yeah. Basically, you have the choice of a... It's like the neck. You have a hit and a crit one. I think, technically, the, the hit has a little bit more item budget, but same. It's a, If you can use the hit, use the prince one. Otherwise, if you're jamming a lot of hit, like, you know, like I am and like a lot of warlocks kind of should be, at least jamming the veiled noble doubles, you know, you might end up having enough hit to just run the crit one, the, so the gruel one, and... Uh, it's going to be good. So. Yes, yeah, so something I want to throw in real quick from a tier 5 perspective. I've made tier 5 this list, yes. and I just want to throw out there that this uh, this Gruul Cloak, or I guess it's, yeah, the High yeah, King Cloak, I guess yeah. you should call it, is on the True. tier 5 this list, and the Ruby Cloak is not. So yes. that's something to consider in the long run. Yeah, Ruby might be better for you right now. But in tier 5, you're going to gain so much hit that you don't need that hit on your cloak, and the brute cloak is going to be stronger. If 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 you have uh, if you have ruin, you know, some of us might be right. playing with the fell boy, so uh, just tossing that out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but case, yeah, but in that case, you're just going to get the... Uh, you're not, still not getting the hit cloak, I think. It's, yeah, uh, you want the 44 spell power one. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, I think... So for me personally, I'm going the Veiled Noble Topaz route, and I still uh, have enough room, uh, enough leeway in my hit rating to go Ruby Drape of the Mysticant. And I feel like if you can utilize the hit rating from Ruby Drape, uh, it's really quite good. But then again, I'm running Demo, so Crit is slightly less valuable for me since I don't have Ruin compared to Fire and Destro. Yep. Um, but even still, I, I, I feel like in phase one, it's just like the neck. You you get what you get, and you kind of gear around it. Like, if you got the crit cloak, then try to go for the Moros neck and make up for your hit rating that way. Or vice versa, if you get Ruby Drape and the Mysticant. But both of these cloaks are really, really good. Yeah, last thing I want to throw in on cloaks is, if for some reason you still have Cloak of the Necropolis, you are fine in Tier 4 with that. That is... That's what I'm wearing right now. It's a very, very strong cloak. It's actually it's a middle ground option. <laughs> actually, yeah, it's, like it's, it's right very in between strong. the two. Yeah, yeah it's, it's very strong. It's better than the brute. If you're gaining all the hit from uh, the cloak or ruby, the cloak of Necropolis is a little bit better than brute cloak, but obviously worse than ruby. But cloak of the Necropolis is a very strong option if you still have that from Nax. All right, I think we're good on cloaks, right? Yep, I think so. Craig, you back? Right. Back house is muted, sorry. You guys got cloaks handled, I trust you? Yep, we did it. Talker? I mean, trust, you know, you shouldn't trust us, generally speaking, but, you know, <laughs> we, we can move on. Yeah, what if you guys just give me wrong information this whole time? <laughs> <laughs> the fire destro people would hate me. Man, man we, need, we need to uh, to keep things under wraps so we can parse more, right? <laughs> yeah. All right, next up, chess boys. Hey, oh, there's your fire destro one. I mean... There's your T4. And there's your Shadow Destro. There's your uh, everything else besides Fire Destro. What do you guys think? Let's go with the live first. Good demo, boy. Uh, so, obviously, I feel like everyone knows if you're running Fire, Spell Fire is just the way to go. But if you're not running Fire, if you're going for Demonology or you're going for the DN spec, I think that the T4 chest is bis, especially if you're going for the, uh, the uh, four-piece set bonus in Demonology or DN. Again, 
there are many variables there depends on your kill speed etc etc but if you're running either dn or destro i like this a lot especially if you're trying to gem towards uh, the veiled noble topaz route because then you get the socket bonus regardless and yeah the socket bonus isn't great it's just stamina whatever but it's still nice to be able to attain that socket bonus with basically no downside whatsoever uh since you're going the veiled noble topaz route anyways but uh to kind of piggyback off that um it could be an option for shadow destro as well is it like the most ideal option to get your two-piece bonus mm, that's debatable depending on what gear you have but like we were saying earlier you have much more flexibility in the two-piece bonus that you go for compared to Fire Destro. So if you have Shadow Destro Warlocks and Fire Destro Warlocks in your raid for some reason, then it'd be better for you to soak this token over the Fire Destro Warlock because obviously the Fire Destro Warlock needs very, very particular pieces in order to reach their two-piece bonus as opposed to you as a Shadow Destro Warlock that can kind of mix and match what pieces he or she uses to obtain their two-piece bonus. So to kind of TLDR some things up, I think T4 chest, amazing if you're running uh, DN or if you're running Demonology and you're going for that four-piece bonus. But as for Shadow Destro and Fire Destro, Shadow is variable, Fire, you just don't go for it whatsoever. I agree. Yeah, I mean, I think Alive just covered everything. Spellfire... Obviously, if you're fire, there's no other. You just have to craft it. That's your option. That's your bread and butter. Um, but other than that, I think Alive pretty much covered everything right there. So, anybody else got anything for chess? Just one real quick thing that I want to, to say on fire. So, fire, spell fire is like the best, period. The thing is, at one point, if people see old information, we were saying in the Warlock Discord that we may be able to bypass Spellfire Chest for T4 Chest. That's not the case anymore. That used to be just to proc the tier 4 bonus to, to, to go shoulder and chest. And now with the helmet, you just go helmet and, uh, and shoulders. So you definitely do not touch tier 4 chest with a 10 foot pull as fire. Even if you've seen like us discussing that earlier on, like a month or two ago. Yep. No tier four chest for fire. It just, no, just doesn't happen. All right. Sounds good to me, brothers. Uh, do I have anything to say on chest? No. Can oh. I kind of go off on a tangent here for of a second? Course. So, Ryusei and J Paint, I know that neither of you are close to Biss at the moment. I don't think any of us are close to Biss, other than, you know, other than the Corrupt oh, Loot Council. Well, yeah. uh, other than uh, Corrupt Loot Council. I, it is not Corrupt Loot Council. No, no I, you will not it's convince it's me. No. Yo, you know what's crazy is I've streamed all my raids, and they'll tell you it's not Corrupt Loot Council. It's it's just rolls, or a lot of it was just rolling off shit, bro. Okay. Like between Because all the Warlocks are even, so we just rolled off. Roll 99.99, you know. Answer, answer me this, okay? <laughs> what, who's the first caster in your guild to get the... Uh, the gruel blade just me just but it was rolled off between oh, nine people mm, uh, well, mm, you also mm, people it was rolled off that, between right? nine people sure was sure was and buddy. i won by one uh-huh wow what a coincidence that's crazy <laughs> anyways uh <laughs> so what i was gonna say is how do you guys it, it's not always relevant obviously the cleaner your guild is the better you guys perform the less relevant it is but how do you guys feel about having such such low amounts of stamina as fire like even if we look at spellfire robe uh belt gloves comparing that to like t4 robe if you're running dn or demonology there's so much stamina on the t4 robe but on spellfire I mean, you just have very very little stamina and then let's say you're running it. spell strike pants too they barely right I right i don't need it you don't need it you still remember you still have demonic embrace you still have all these other things that are making you clap be still take you're yeah. still tankier than a mage. i, th I, I, I think that it's it's not totally relevant if your guild is perfect, right? But I feel like these are things that your normal, everyday, average warlock player in an average guild might feel. Like, what happens if you're on Gruul and people are a little bit too close and that shatter damage kills, like, is an overkill of 60 damage or something? I don't oh. know. I just... I, 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 I like, I like, I like being beefy. I mean, because basically... Well, of course, I am fire... I'm also still <laughs> some. No, but like the uh, dude no, was like, soul link. The dude was soul link in chats. Like, yeah, just I like being beefy. <laughs> <laughs> I like being beefy. 
Jesus Christ. But yeah, no, basically, so I'm fire. I'm even rocking still some pieces on Max Rama. So, you know, definitely it's like less stamina than TBC. And, you know, like I'm still, I'm not like on a, on a top world guild for sure. So I, I completely understand what you mean. And it's fine. It's like mighty fine. Like it's like in classic people were saying, oh, I value stamina a lot. And well, of course, people are saying don't get hit and everything. But at the end of the day, full buff, I have like 8k, 8.5, which is not much, granted, but you survive pretty much everything that gets thrown at you. So if you're just a bit careful and kind of know the fight, like, of course, Shatter, like Shatter, I survived two, uh, two people around me and I won't survive three. And, you know, that's, that's fine by me because if you're, if you're hit by three Shatters, like something has gone seriously wrong. So... Maybe if I stacked more stamina, you know, I could survive free, but that's not the way you. you I'm doing you won't that find me being a stam. Yeah, you won't find me being a stamina shell, dude. Yeah. I just well, if you like, I got okay. For example, last week I got hit by High King Mogar for 17k. Ain't no amount of stamina saving me there, you know. Right. But now right. I, hey, I know so what you mean. Went. Again, so I'm, not, I, I'm not trying to shill for it. I don't. I don't highly, highly value stamina or anything like that. I don't think it's like make or break type of stat i just feel like in an average guild you, you know especially on gruel high king super easy mag you barely take damage but on gruel i feel like uh you know it's just just doesn't feel that good man just go play yeah. demonology screw fire yeah just play if, if you're dying on if you're taking raid damage and dying just go play demo but uh well you know, you know. just get better healers yeah. True. Yeah, true. If you're true. consistently dying uh, the gruels, it's not a change. Yeah, it has spec nothing to do. Problem. Yeah. It is a yeah, guild. It's a, is a it's guild, a guild problem. problem yeah. yeah. Right. And again, I'm not shilling for it, but I just feel like it. I don't know. I don't like the feeling of it. I I will say I don't like not having stay, like when I'm open world farming for, as fire destro for some reason. Say like I have raid tomorrow and I've already respect for it. And if I farm tonight, farming open world with in full spell fire, it just doesn't feel great, right? It's but. Not uh, the best. I think I think that's really the I think that's also just generally speaking destro problem, but yeah, it's just not Yeah. Just yeah. Alright, well that's it, that's it. I'm like killing I'm killing mobs before they reach me most of the time, so you know it's not that big of a Yeah, we can we can move on to bracers which uh, aren't gonna have stamina either, so let's go. <laughs> I, mean, I mean they might I mean, they might they so might just they just to just to hit off on bracers, I wanted to say that we could brace the havoc or still piss. Uh, it's kind of cringe that it's best still, but it's, you know, whatever. Uh, you, I mean, there are season one bracers because they have crit on them. I don't suggest getting them though. Uh, I like bracers of havoc, and I listed these maiden ones because of that little weird circle of demonic, knowledge, demonic knowledge, and, and, and you know, with the stamina and stuff with the fell guard getting stats. It's kind of why I like it. I like that, but I don't have it. I just thought it'd be I mean, cool to list them there because of fell guard because I run fell guard. You know. Go ahead. Yeah. I think there's two bracers that are also in there that, that could be uh, that could be thought about. Well, havoc is still beast along with the PvP ones. They're basically neck and neck, and the PvP has 22 stamina more. But uh, on top of that, so that's the PvP that's there. On top of that, there's the Crimson Bracer of Gloom, which I think yep. are from Blood Furnace. Hellfire. Uh, like, Hellfire. Uh, Ramparts. Hellfire. Ramparts. Ramparts, Ramparts, yeah. Ramparts, yeah. Ramparts, yeah. Ramparts, right, right, from Omok, I think, or something like that. And yeah, basically, they're same. They're good. They're technically beast if you can use the hit. But once again, another piece, but like, if you can use the hit, it's really good. Well, no, it's so, not if you can use the hit, because you can put a hit socket in the bracers. The bracers are abyss because it's versatile. Because like, right. you might yeah, not need hit one time, and you can swap back and forth. Right. As for, oh, yeah. So, real quick, before I forget, rock fair bracers. Okay, rock fair bracers are so good. The issue is bracers are better. So, this is abyss list. The reason I didn't put that on there is because these are 42 gold on the auction house right now. Maybe less than that, and they're better. So, like, why farm a heroic yeah. for something? They can lose it out. But I will remind, thank you, you card. That animal bra animal boss bracers on a shadow wrath roll are bonkers. I can't find yeah, them on the head because yeah, it doesn't yeah. show it. But let's yeah. talk about that. I think they're yeah. plus plus fifty eight. I think fifty five. The... So from I what I <laughs> it might be fifty eight. From what I saw in like old dated comments, the bracers are fifty five. Might be fifty eight. I'm not sure. I don't have video evidence or anything. Just old wowhead comments. And the belt I believe is seventy seven. So. Both of those items are really good, but I'm pretty sure everyone here knows, like, yeah, sure, those items are good, but you could farm and reset that boss three hours a day every day, and the chance of you seeing those bracers 
or belt is really, really low. It's got to roll Shadow Wrath, which I believe is like a 1.7 chance. And then it also has to be Cloth on top of that. That The chance of that happening is just so low. But, you know, if you... If you're good at winning the lottery, if you know if you know you're the luckiest man alive, then yeah, sure, those are great. But you know, for ninety nine point nine 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 percent of the players out there, we will never see that item. Yeah, yeah, I think I yeah. ran the we, we, we don't even it's like do one animal. in a it's like one in a thousand of getting like your plus shadow or fire of whatever you well actually it's well you gotta get the right wrong, boss. Man. It's That's uh too long to be true. <laughs> it's so you got one out of three that you get the right boss right and then you got one out of four that it's cloth and then you have i think it's like two percent that you get uh plus shadow damage right or plus fire or whatever so you're talking about one in a little bit over a thousand odds that you actually get those bracers so if you get them they are bis but i whatever i wouldn't farm them Unless your unless your guild really wants to do that for you, and you want to spend six hours doing that lockout, eh, just get bracers of havoc for twenty gold on the auction house. Yeah, you have yeah. to get rock on the ravager boss to spawn, and then roll cloth, and then roll shadow wrath. It's like yeah. kind of bonkers. Yeah, and like Crix was saying earlier, like crimson bracers of gloom, great bracers. Even bands of nefarious deeds, you know, they're fine. Even if it's demonology, they're fine, but. Really, the Bracers of Havoc, they have great stats on it already. And then just the fact that it has a socket offers you that flexibility. So if you don't need, you know, a, an eight hit gem in there, you can go for a little bit of spell power. You can go for the Noble Topaz, or you can flex it to something else, depending on what your stat weights currently are. So I would totally be leaning towards Bracers of Havoc over any other option. Unless, of course, you're one of the super Omega lucky guys that gets uh, the Beast Boss Bracers. Yep. Uh, I guess weapon is next, maybe. What? Is that right? I want to look at these veterans' cuffs. Look at these the veterans' cuffs are not. I don't like those. Like they're twenty-two spell damage, fourteen crit, and a socket. So they're they're I not. Mean, they're worth mentioning. They're, they're, same, okay. they're about the same as Avok, actually. They're maybe one spell power better. Depends on your stat weight, but they're basically the same. It's just that they have stamina on top of it. For yeah. shadow, De for shadow destro, they're almost the same. For fire destro, bracers of havoc are better. It's just the fact that like if. I mean, if you're PvPing a lot and you have these bracers and you bought them with your honor, then sure, wear them and don't buy Havoc. But like from a PvE perspective, go to the auction house, buy bracers of Havoc, do the same damage. But the general silk cuffs are comparable. If you have them, you don't need to buy Havoc. But from just a raw mm -hmm. PvE perspective, just get bracers of Havoc. I would just save those save those bracers because you're going to need Season 2 bracers. Those are best for, we'll get that later, but that's what you use until our bracers. That's what you, because it takes 2,000 days to get 10,000 honor, bro. It takes so long to farm honor. It's kind of crazy. All right, next up, the gloves. Going to open all these up right now. Open it up. I think I went too far. I went too far. Cool. So Angry Spark gloves are from a world boss. Uh, we're not going to delve into them. If you have them, congratulations. That's what you're using. Uh, Fire Dash is going Spellfire. And everything else goes void heart gloves. Um, this is where I'm going to leave it. I want to hear what they say. because uh, I go void heart gloves every time. Um, in a situation where I'm only running two piece, I could I would see running one of these, whether I need crit or hit, and then you know dropping this if I have another two piece somewhere else. But I want to see what the boys think, man. Yes. Yeah, so fire obviously runs spell fire gloves. Shadow Destro, you can or you cannot run these gloves. It really depends. It really depends if you want to go for your four piece or you don't want to go for four piece. If you don't go for four piece, you obviously don't wear a tier four gloves. They're, I think, probably the weakest tier piece. Maybe the legs are a little bit worse. But if you're going for four piece, you obviously wear gloves. You could even not wear gloves and you could wear tier four legs, right? However, you want to get your four piece is up to you. Uh, Demo, Demo probably. Demo does wear tier four gloves, I'm sure. That's just the most efficient way to get a four piece. Mm -hmm. But it's also to take into consideration the hand wraps of flowing thought and the soul eaters hand wraps are extremely extremely strong for shadow destro which is shadow destro could be using them until four piece if they're going four piece and demo could be doing the same they're extremely strong gloves they're extremely strong for trash in general because you don't need hit on trash right and your four piece is not helping you on trash as shadow destro so all these gloves are good spell fire for fire obviously and then pick your poison for any of the shadow specs mm-hmm Anybody else have something to chime in? Kind of simple, but just in case. Oh, completely agree. Uh, I mean, yeah, I completely agree as well. I, 
touching on the anger spark, which is a minor uh, discussion since most of us aren't going to see these gloves. You could mix and match, like if you're not fire, you could mix and match what four piece bonus or two piece bonus you go for if for some reason you got your hands on these gloves or when we get to legs, the leggings of the seventh circle as well. But the both of the items are just incredible items. Even in T5, they're pretty damn good. Mm -hmm. But like I said, uh, you're really, really not going to see these gloves. So I'd just default to what J-Pain said. I think you hit yeah. the nail on the head there. Yeah, you kind of hug on the T4 gloves, especially in T5. You're still kind of typically running like sh head shoulders or head gloves of some sort. So, I mean, get used to them. Yeah, but the T4 ones aren't bad. They're actually really shoulders, good. Right? They're really, really good. What? Right? By, by, by the way, likely head and shoulders. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Head shoulders would I would run for every spec if I had to, yeah. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. Because you, know, you, you want to, you can't really go for um, the typical headpiece you go in T5 since uh, Chaotic Skyfire Diamond's out. Like you, you need the meta socket. So it's like, do you go for the tier helm or do you for, go for the goggles and go NG? And the difference between the T4 helm and the goggles isn't great enough for you to want to go the goggles comparatively to the other pieces that you'd be dropping. Yeah, that's a whole another video for tier five, right? Tier five, you would wear engineering goggles, not tier five helm. No, uh, I'm not saying tier five. I'm oh, saying okay, tier okay, four. okay, 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 okay. Yeah. Didn't even know engineering goggles were in right now. <laughs> I'm talking about tier four for, for, for two piece. Yeah, okay, okay. Uh, yeah, but in, in tier five, engineering goggles are there, but like that's that's later, definitely. It depends on the spec, everything. But it's for or, another episode, as Japan said. Yep, yep. Yeah, Soul Eaters, hand wraps, low, uh, low drop rate. I'm not sure. Uh, I like them. I like Soul Eaters. Uh, Shadow Destro, I prefer if I don't need to, if I would run like Helm. It's like you could run Helm Shoulders T4 and then run Soul Eaters, but you'd have to go with Soul Eater versus Frozen Shadow Wave Shoulders, which would be the options because then you run Gloves and Helm with T4. I don't know. It's a whole it's a whole vortex of options here. But either way, yeah, I like them. Next up, Belt Soup or Simple Belts, bud. Come and take it. Go ahead, Rai. Can you hear that? Uh, well, words? obviously, Belt, Fire, Spellfire, easy enough. Shadow, Gold of Ruination. A shadow Destro and Demo, either Girdle or the one that's... Every girl. Uh, it's all girl. Yeah. Or, yeah, Divine Inspiration. Exactly. I forgot the name, but yeah. So, basically, so, easy. From left to right, Fire Destro, Shadow Destro, Demo and Afli. Kind of. Demo and Afli can also use Ruination, but you know. But, uh, so, yeah, actually, did perfectly wrong, but uh, anyway. Perfectly so, wrong, so it, uh, yeah. I did a little bit of messing around with demo builds and affliction builds, and the Belt of Divine Inspiration actually came out pretty much ahead of Girdle in almost every situation. Um, so if you are demo and you plan on running demo, don't craft Girdle. If you plan on getting Belt of Divine Inspiration first, it's better and doesn't cost an insane amount of gold. So something to consider. I don't know what Alive is planning for his demo belt, but let's... Let's throw it over to him, see what he thinks. Yeah, so I just went with Girdle of Ruination just because I didn't want to bother waiting to see if I got a drop. Of right, of course. But even still, I feel like the items are really, really close. Like, if you really were trying to save your gold and, you know, trying to hold on to as much as possible, you could wait for the belt. But I wouldn't say that Belt of Di Divine Inspiration or Girdle of Ruination is, like, the, the clear winner in either scenario. I think... They're both extremely close. Like for demonology, uh, spell critical strike rating doesn't affect your pet's critical strike rating. So the critical strike rating from Girdle of Ruination isn't as valuable as it is in other specs, especially since you also don't have Ruin on top of that. But you are still running Chaotic Skyfire Diamond, so it's not like critical strike rating's worth nothing. It's just worth less than it is in the other specs that you're running, which is the reason why Belt of Divine Inspiration comes out to be somewhat similar where it normally would not comparatively to other specs but tldr you know if you don't want to wait for belt of the divine inspiration girdle of ruination in my opinion doesn't cost that much and it's worth crafting if you're sitting on a bad belt and want to upgrade immediately agreed i want to touch on yeah. why again divine inspiration is uh pretty good for demo i know it's niche but uh obviously demo as you gain intellect and stam your pet gains intellect and stam, and then you gain spell power. So that's another reason. Because you're gaining 13 intellect and, what, 9 stam just from switching that belt. And then the socket bonus for that belt is very achievable to gain 4 more spell damage. Versus 
the girdle of, uh, socket bonus of being four stamina is pretty worthless. But yeah. Spellfire for fire, girdle for shadow destro, belt of divine inspiration, or girdle for affliction and demo. Pretty straightforward. Muted, sorry about that. Someone was asking about Infernal Waste Cord. 459 spell uh, fire damage. Yeah, yeah so... It's spell fire, but worse, pretty much. I yeah, so, I mean, it's worse than... Right, it's worse than spell fire, and you don't get the set bonus of spell fire by wearing it. So, I mean, if you really didn't craft spell fire, you're broke. It's a great option, but we're going to assume that most people crafted spell fire and are having the set bonus from it. Okay, nice. There you go, guys. Easy peasy. Pants! Pantalones, starting with the world boss pants that are going to fit right next to the everything else that's world boss related in the sex category of we're not getting it. If you have it, I hate you. Congratulations. These are good pants. If, if you have it, I want you to know that it's like two DPS better than spell strike. Yep. And so. back on spell strike, <laughs> yeah. those are your biz pants. There is no reason why you should go into T5 without these pants on. Like you've had, I know it's, they can be expensive, but it's what week six seven you could already have farmed them up if you wanted to which just take if you don't have these right now and you're thinking to yourself like man i really don't want to farm those farm a hundred gold a day any way you can until then and you'll be fine like they're that good uh the t4 pants are you know t4 pants but you just don't wear them because it's supposed right anyone else uh going back to something i mean the answer is pretty straightforward but going back to something i touched on before if like specific scenario i don't have tier four helm but i do have tier four legs as fire destro but i wear spell strike right now obviously if i grab tier four helm tomorrow i would toss on tier four pants and helm and make my two set rather than wear spell strike so it's situational for fire destro that's a specific example where you could go two piece over wearing spell strike pants but typically spell strike all the way that's going to be your best option that's your best that's it sounds good there's nothing much to chime on here. Thank you for the sub, Ryan. I appreciate that, Boba. Even... Uh, so, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, even if you're going for a four-piece bonus, like Demonology, for example, I still wouldn't even go for the pants. You just want to stick with the Spell Strike pants. It gives you too much it's too, stats. Yeah, it's, it's just too much. It's too strong. Boots? Oh, is that we boots? Boots of foretelling and ruby slippers. These are pretty much the only boots we're going to mention because these are the only ones that you'll probably be seeing and that are important. Uh, Fire Destro is going to go ahead and age towards boots of foretelling while everybody else goes frozen shadow wave. You guys? I mean, you pretty yeah, much cool. covered all of it in yes. two sentences. Yeah, it's pretty simple. <laughs> it's pretty much, uh, yeah. Ruby slippers are cool because there's a hearthstone that matches your other hearthstone, so it's worthless in my opinion. Right? right? Like, why? Like yeah, at first, why, like yeah. why do they do that? Like, hey, we made these boots just in case you scrapped your Hearthstone. I can't logically no, I mean, think of a reason why they're in the game. Thematic, you know, like Wizard of Oz, you no know, bullshit, yeah. bullshit, no place like home. But uh, I mean, Ruby slippers are not are definitely not bad. It's just that, especially if we we have hit gems, they just won't find a proper place. Anyway. Yeah, I mean, say, I mean, look at the boots of Fortellian versus Ruby slippers. Say. You put two eight hit gems in Boots of Foretelling. Okay, now you have the exact same amount of hit, nine less spell power, but you gain 19 crit. So Boots of Foretelling are just better. Ruby is like a budget thing. If you don't, like, if you just get them and you don't have Foretelling yet, sure, equip them, but Boots of Foretelling are just better. This might sound crazy, but for some reason, having sockets is better than not having sockets. Yeah, I can't, yeah, crazy, right? Wait, it's, what? It, it's kind what? of a it's kind of a new concept. Uh, to me. What? Yeah. What's Trust me when you say I ran the Sims and uh, having sockets is good. Uh, so another thing I want to touch on boots real quick. Uh, another one of those rare bosses in Karazhan drops boots, but they plus roll shadow and fire damage. They go up to, I believe, 78 fire damage and shadow damage. So oh, yeah. it, <laughs> if you if you grab those, you know, those are bis. But uh, other than that, these are bis. So don't worry about that, though. All right, I think we're on to what rings now. Yeah. So unfortunately, guys, rings didn't really change much from your previous, besides the two rings that are added. And uh, just to, you know, they'll go more detail than I will. But I'm gonna simply say that ring slots I treat for hit. So if you need hit, I put a ring, a hit ring on. If I don't need a hit, I put a crit ring on. And in case you have banded crimson for hit, you have ring of recurrence for crit, and that's it. I kind of just bounce it off my crit. If I don't have an Ellie Shaman, I need more hit. You know, vice versa. Yeah, 
exactly. Ring is like one of the best uh, one of the best slots to flex hit it in. That's just that's just really good. And you have so many options. Also, for people who played classic, you have four rings that you can get from there. You basically have a cartoon ring. You have the two nax ring and three, uh, three nax ring. You have band of the inevitable. Uh, the, the, the fire ring and the seal of the dam. Uh, yeah. All four, all four are very viable. So you have a lot more option there. Like three of them give eight hit, which is not an amount of hit that you find in any TBC rings. You know, allowing you to fine tune it a little bit more. So there's that, and you know, basically, that ring is just to to fine tune everything. Also, on top of that, if you don't need any hit. And you have uh, only access to TBC rings. There's uh, there's the violet eye. That's also pretty good. I don't think I see. I see no, it's, it here. A, it's a little less than recurrence, so I didn't put it on there. But yeah, it's yeah, yeah, it's yeah, it is. Yeah. Could, I think it's a it's a couple you could get both of them. Yeah, but yeah. you could get both of them if you don't need heat at all. Yep. Right. So, and I, I think yep, yep. this comes into play when we're talking about the items we were talking about before. Like, let's say you got the Moros necklace, necklace, and you didn't get the crit necklace, or Let's say that uh, you got a, a, a different head item, uh, item, like you got Ruby Cape and you didn't get uh, Cloak of the Ogre Mad Guy. Then this is a, where that starts to come into play. You can start looking at your rings and be like, ah, okay, well, you know, I didn't get the crit cloak. I didn't get the crit neck. I got double hit neck. So now maybe I want to go for Violet Eye or right. Ring of Records or, you know, a cool. double crit ring setup instead of a crit hit or a double hit setup. Right. Rings is the easiest place to drop hit, gain crit, gain spell power. Like at any right, given yeah. point, I have like seven or eight different rings yep. in my mm -hmm. bags for different scenarios. I have more rings than any other gear piece, right? It's and just... If you need Mm -hmm. A yeah. little bit of crit and hit too, sparkling. You guys, a couple rings that'll give you hit and crit and spell power, which is nice. Yeah, there, there's a lot yeah. of flexibility in rings. Uh, choose plus, what you need. Plus, if you're a super big dick min maxer and you're trying to min max your seed damage on trash, you know, trash is not boss level. You can drop hit rating. And if you want to slap with seed, Put on those double crit rings, baby. Start slapping, and the yeah. next warlock beside you, he's gonna be wearing 16% hit or 13% hit or whatever. And he's like, "Dude, what the hell? Like, how come your seed is so much better than mine?" You're like, "Well, I got know, six just, more percent crit than you, dude." You know, just mm -hmm. just get good, bro. Small <laughs> things like that are a big deal. Is swapping, you know, we're going that tomorrow. I mean, next week with the parsing tips, but that's yeah, one huge. Two, swapping for trash set is huge. Unless you're like me and you forget to swap back to your headset before you pull a boss. It really, yeah, really it. is, yeah. Yeah, one interesting perspective that uh, that I found talk about earlier is that if you have hit ring in your boss uh, in your standard boss encounter set, it's way easier to drop it for trash because obviously it's not as if you like jamming it everywhere and you know need to have an entire different piece or like the same but jam differently. So yeah, just the best flex ever. Right. For ring. All right. I think we're good on rings then. Yep. Trinkets, which kind of fit in the same slot as rings, is where nothing really changes. Uh, this is probably the most boring slot here, but we can talk about... Is this going to do this for me? It's not going to. Uh, we'll go over these trinkets first. Uh, Mark of the Champion is obviously going to be Biss. Uh, there's not a lot of... Oh, wait, we're not... Yeah, there's not a lot of Mark of the Champion uses in T5, besides like Leo's Back. Demon. Uh, I'm talking about T5. Oh, okay. Just preparing for T5. I would say like Leo's Demon. There's not a lot of demons where you get use out of this, but this is going to remain Biss if you're in demons. And it's going to be pretty much Icon and Quags, like you're glued to you unless you need a hit where you'll swap on Bludgeon and Stone. That's all I got to say. Or, or, or Tear if you need it. Uh, yep. That, that mm -hmm. works as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like Tear is kind of slept on for the earlier stages of gearing. I don't think yeah. it's like Phase 1 Biss, but mm -hmm. you can really right, hold on to it for quite a long time as you're gearing up your Warlock through Phase 1. But yeah, I, I agree with Critics. Ultimately, just Icon and Quags are such good trinkets comparatively to the other trinkets that we have out there. Even in Phase 2 and Tier 5, they're still really oh, they're good still trinkets. Be, yeah. still pretty much peace, except yeah. for the card, but you know, the card is, uh, is yeah. an overall subject entirely. But yeah, Icon and Quag can't go wrong. They're, they're not from raids. Do your heroics, farm it, get it. There's no excuse. not to, Unless you just have terrible RNG with Quags, there's no excuse not to have both of these. Okay, and since we're talking about this, we're going to get a little bit spicy, and we're going to talk about Mag's Eye and Lightning Capacitor, because pretty wow. sure you guys have been asked this a lot, just like me. I'm going to tell you guys right now, they look good. Well, Lightning Capacitor is trash, yeah. so I'll let them 
eat that up. Mag's Eye looks a little more appeasing, and that can be confusing because it does have good spell power. It has a, a good amount, like 54 spell power. So kind of, yeah. But the on use of 170 spell power or whatever, if you get resisted, is not is what we're saying. I know people think, well, I'm not. I'm a warlock. I'm missing. I'm getting resisted all the time. Why can't I use this? It's garbage. I'll let you guys go from there. Surprisingly enough, you, you get resist at just enough rate to piss you off and to make Magzai useless. So, <laughs> <laughs> you're losing on all the fronts there. I know yeah. totally what you mean, man. It's like, so, I'll be I'll be hit cap, so there's 1% chance to miss, and then I get three Shadow Bolts back-to-back -back miss, and I'm like, what is this game? Yeah, I, sh I should have been using Quacks. No, but uh, real numbers-wise, at hit cap, Magzai comes out to be like, the uh, proc of it comes out to be like 10 spell power over an infinite amount of time. So you're looking at a total of what, 63 spell power? Is that right? Um, yeah. So. Which is okay, but like, you it's, know, it's, it's okay, no but, it, the others. but it's worse than Icon and it's worse than Quags. And you can just get those, right? You just do heroics, you farm them. It's just not good. Yeah, I uh, agree. I mean,. If Lightning capacitor is a little bit different, though. It's so light, yeah. Well, Go lightning ahead. capacitor. Or well, if we're gonna move on to lightning capacitor, I w I was just gonna say for Mags, I you know, it's never worked in such a way where it worked in for partial resist. I know I f wanted to first look into that right away on beta, um, just on the off chance that Blizzard screwed up and made it that way, but. It does uh, not. It's not scripted. It, it does not. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I've had a lot of people PMing me in Discord trying to confirm if it does or does not. It does not work on partial resist, you guys. Only works on full resist, making it, like Ryu say, just barely not enough, but only only enough to piss you off. Yeah. Um, on the lightning capacitor, for a single target fight, lightning capacitor is not good. Uh, for trash, for seeding, it might have application in tier 5, but you'll never use this in a boss type setting. Yeah, okay. well, I think Capacitor has... Um, so, in beta, we were seeing logs that basically said that in one seed, you could actually get the... If you had enough crits, you could actually get the, uh, get the lightning directly. So you'd have like three charges, instantly from one explosion lightning and you know basically you could have a, have a lightning like every two seats or something like that from now what it appears in life i mean i have it i tried it it doesn't seem to work that way at all and uh, it seems that it is indeed an icd on the charge and not just on the lightning which means that especially if you have like explosions that are in quick succession i've, I've had situations where basically even maybe just my bad luck, but from what I've seen, I've like had four seats explode kind of at the same time and like in one charge, and I'm like, well, that's a waste of a trinket. Right. It it doesn't have too many applications. Maybe we'll yeah, have some theory crafting on it for tier five, but for, I mean, if for no one wants it, it's just bad. Uh, unfortunately, it's it just bad. Like it it's super super fun trinket, but you're not you're not going to get anything out of it. Yeah. If, if, it, if no one in your raid wants it, there's no Ellie Sham, there's no Arcane Mage or something, and they're going to DE it, take it maybe for some yeah. memes in the future, but it's you don't really need it. I wouldn't go for it. Yeah. Uh, what about Shif Shifar's Nexus Horn, someone's asking? Uh, oh, I mean... That's, really, that's actually a really good trinket for seed. Only mm -hmm. for seed. On single target, it's pretty much trash. Or like, it's... It's okay if you're like, I've really bad and I've, I really have good gear and I have nothing else. But as soon as you get any semi-respectable semi trinket, you get way better than, uh, than that. And if you get, you know, quags and icon, like, you don't even look at it anymore. But on seeds, as long as you're not AOE capped, it's great because seed benefits a lot from crit. And you're pretty much like proking it nearly instantly. Well, not quite, but... That's the thing, like, you're, you're proking your first seed or second seed, and then you have the 130 or however much it is damage for the rest of, uh, of your seeding session. Yeah, I agree. The chance to proc it with seed is really quite high, especially compared to single target, and I think it's really, really good for seed. You know, maybe you could 
question a few things depending on if you already have Quag's Eye and Icon, but regardless, if you have it now and you don't have perfect gear or anything and you're looking for a seed setup, it is super, super nice. I mean, in my seed set, I have everything, and in my seed setup, I'm using VAT and Quag. It's just like so nice when, uh, when everything props and you know, like just <laughs> you just have seed go brrrr. The, the dream. dream. Exactly. Yeah, I actually, I actually, I actually have that. I have that, Quags, Four Piece Oblivion, and uh, Blade of Wizardry rocking right now, so we're going he heavy procs on the seed set. How much did you buy your blade for? 1,700 gold. Oh, that's not that bad. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't bad. Uh, they're down to like 1,500 on my server now, but it's really 15. I was like 1,700 gold, I could farm that in four hours. It's worth it, you know? Yeah, so. yeah, not bad at all. Yeah, but I think that's all for trinkets. There's a lot of other small ones that just aren't, aren't as good as Icon and Quag. Icon and Quag is what you want to shoot for, but I think we're good on trinkets, right? Get the juicy one! Weapons. Not even with this one. Well, I mean, that's fairly a easy. But... Tish. I will chime oh. in and say a Tish is a very good weapon. While being a personal DPS loss, you can expect to wear this... Until the back end of T6, I would say probably swap it. We all say typically swap it with Zardoom off of Illidan. Um, or Tempest I, we, we don't have one of these in Raid. We are not a... We don't have this in Raid. I don't know if one of you guys do. If you guys want to chime in more, you have more experience in this than we do. My so, guild, uh, go ahead, JP. Uh, go ahead, go ahead. You're fine. I was just going to say, uh, my guild personally doesn't have one. Uh, I, I was playing EU for a super long time, but... Uh, I was a boosty boy come TBC, and like half my guild was, were boosty boys. So uh, we definitely do not have any of TH, unfortunately. Yeah, same. So I will say that from in a vacuum, all your warlocks are pressing their buttons just as hard, right? Everybody's doing equal amount of damage, and you're buffing this whole. You're buffing either four warlocks and an Ellie shaman or three warlocks a boom can an Ellie shaman with your 33 spell power and your group actually stays in range of this aura yes there is a range on this 30 yards right you can't just run around the room or else it's useless then atish yeah atish is bis until you for raid dps atish is your best weapon until you get either Tempest of Chaos or Zardoom in Tier 6. So, if you have it, your raid has it, good for you, you're pumping, but from you will lose personal DPS. But from a raid DPS perspective, it is a game. So Gina in chat is saying with 4A, Thieves Lock's not really worth better than Gruul's. The reason is, it's a personal DPS loss, for sure. But you bring it for because of the aura. This is 33 on each person, and stacks. Which is why yeah. you keep it, right? So, yeah, another thing is the aura stacks. So, if you have four warlocks all using Atiesh, then every warlock is gaining 33 spell power from their own aura plus 99 from all the other auras, right? So, they're gaining, what, 132 spell power from them total. So, it is very strong. If, it's especially strong enough to where we're doing Nax runs for it. So, I mean, yeah, it's worth it, it getting it. It's, it is very good. Yeah. yeah. One one quick thing also on, uh, on Atiesh. We see a lot of time the questions that, oh, and do you re do you not replace it at all if you have like four warlocks? And actually, the number of uh, the number of ATHs you have doesn't change when you uh, you replace it. Right. But uh, yeah, I mean, bottom line, for red DPS, it's the best thing you can have until you know late tier six. So, like, for instance, what. What Nis is saying, he's trying to put uh, to put that in perspective, but like, he's looking only at personal DPS. He's kind of like forgetting that you know. He, he says that uh, just Gruul plus Badge is more uh, is more spell power and crit on that, which is true for personal DPS. You need to think that raid DPS in TBC, generally speaking, raid DPS is better than personal DPS, and ATH is like the personification of it for warlocks. Mm -hmm. If you have it, you're like. Well, you, you're using it, period. Like, it's good for the guild, and, you know, at the end, what's good for the raid, it's good for you. Like, if you kill if you kill Morgar in 16 seconds, it's better than if you kill it in two minutes. Well, same idea. Yep. Less, just a lesser time frame. Yep. It's one of those things where you, if you're, it, it, it might be kind of shitty to be stuck with that. You can still get back, speaking of T6, even just right now, like, you'll still be, you might be able to be able to plug a Karazhan and get a Mind Blade still and have that for your parses if you're looking at it that way as well. 
And when you enter T6, it's kind of like, hey, this one guy has been gimped with that. Let's give him TOC first or let's give him Zardoom first or something like that. You know what I mean? But don't feel bad yeah. if you're using it. You're buffing up everybody and people know what are. Yeah, and then obviously your other option, right? I think we're moving on to that. Atiesh in the background. Town of the Tempest. World boss. If you get this, cool. Uh, don't expect to. If you do, though, it's your best weapon by a good margin. Other than that, you're either getting the Gruel Sword or the Prince Dagger. They're pretty much the same exact item. So whichever one you get first is what you get. And I'd like to... I'd like to kind of emphasize that. I feel like... So it's there's this stigma around uh, the Prince Dagger that it should go to Ellie Shamans and Shadow Priests and Boomkins first because they can't use swords. And it should. It totally should if you're trying to optimize your loot. But with this in mind, I've had a lot of people PMing me starting to think that, oh, you know, Gruul Sword's just way better because I'm not supposed to get the Prince Dagger. No. The Prince Dagger and the Gruul Sword are pretty much the exact same weapon. It's too crit rating, bro. Don't be that guy. Yeah, don't be, yeah, hey, 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 don't be that be fucking guy. Down. It's pretty much the exact same thing. Yeah, you're not that guy, bro. You're not that you're guy. You're not bro. that guy. And it's not even too crit rating completely, right? Because you gain three intellect on you're the mind guy, blade, bro, which is, you're I don't know, close to one crit rating. So yeah. you're talking about literally one crit rating or like 0.04% of a crit. Like, it is, they're the same yeah, weapon. At point, at 0.7, 0.8 one dps maximum theoretically out of 2.3 to 2.5k theoretical like if you have one and you see the difference between the two like honestly i tip my hat off to you because i i know i wouldn't see it and i'm there's, pretty sure nobody would there's no difference it, it yeah. just doesn't uh previous well, yeah. previous we'll talk about it i guess either the thralmar or honor hold exalted oh, is your alternatives for Previs. I do want to say that uh, you can go ahead and purchase a Blade of Wizardry if you want also. Uh, they technically are a little bit better than Stormcaller or Blade of the Archmage, but uh, if you want to spend that gold, that's up to you. Just buy one, Forehead. Yeah, just just buy one. Just, just get the gold, go to the auction house and buy one. It's really easy. Uh, yeah, easy. Don't have to farm one, rep. One thing real quick, sorry, that I see in the chat is that JJ asking sword to a prot paladin because they can't mm -hmm. use daggers. Mm -hmm. And to, to this, I say yes. Yeah. So much so that, for instance, I literally hard prio the, the gruel sword to my prot paladin. Because, you know, like if he can pump threat, like I can pump damage. So I think that's like a very good thing to do if you, if you can. Or, except, you know, if you're, in, if you're cricks in that case, you know, you get like sword, sword prio to you. You know, that was, that's <laughs> it's normal to, it's normal to prop pal pro that was that sword yeah i yeah. think i think the sword's really good on prop paladin for sure but uh so i'm not sure that let's say let's say my prop paladin let's say i was threat capped all right i'm not sure that the sword is so much of an impact that i will not be threat capped any longer uh it's definitely is not. it good on the prop so paladin obvious. great Right, if you're like right on the edge, sure. But like uh, in in my guild currently, my prot paladin's pretty geared, but he doesn't have this weapon, and I think he's missing like two or three pieces from heroics, like you know some of the random epics. And he was thinking mag and gruel for us this week, and none of us were threat capped. Not even, I mean, we were like twenty percent off a of threat cap. So yeah, so that's maybe the, uh... maybe that's just my personal scenario, mm -hmm. but I yeah. feel like. The the chance for the chance for you sorry the chance for the sword to like barely put you over that tipping point is uncommon. Uh, obviously yeah. it depends. Obviously it depends. So you need to see where the threat is because and I think it's true for pretty much all contested tank gearing. Is it like is it something that will make you make it so you can pump more or not? In that case, I think that one ball. Well, at the same time, Alive is speaking, and he's Demo, so he doesn't have as many threat issues as Fire and Shadow has. That's, that's yeah, also like, true. That's also true. Yeah. I'm threat capped to all hell, no matter what I do with any tank I'm with, pretty much. So I would like—I mean, I wouldn't mind yeah. my prop power and get one, for instance. And like Gennett says, it's so it's nor like if you're in a guild that prowls it to a prop power, it's okay. like don't freak out about it. 
if not then that's a good thing for you but if, if you see that don't freak out about it same with fang and t5 like it just happens it's part of the game right there now if you go talk about mind blade to shadow priest and 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 and, and, and ellie shamans no that's not going to happen right maybe yeah, split split right. web split gruels with a mage maybe or something like that but you're not gonna mind blades your guys it shouldn't be anybody else's also funny that you mentioned leviathan because if if you're really crafty you just chuck the uh, the gruel sword to your prot paladin and then you can yoink the levi the fang of the leviathan for you in tier 5 saying hey man like you should be good shouldn't be that much of an upgrade See, I feel like Jay Paint is already milking this. He's going to be like, oh my god, you guys, I've been sitting on Blade of Wizardry, which I bought myself for so long. I need this weapon. This weapon's mine. Jay Paint's got like a five head strategy already. Yeah, dude, action. I've been uh, yeah. putting it together, dude. Yeah, but uh, that's really it for weapons. Get the first Oh, actually, one. we can bring up, I guess there's. um. Spellblade. Gladiator Spellblade is another good oh, option if you don't have these. Okay, yeah. If you have the 1850 arena rating, which actually guys didn't notice the na scene is super easy to get rating so if you i mean it wouldn't be as hard as to get that as we thought it was going to be but that's a good alternative too i just don't have it on the slides it's 199 spell power but yeah that's, yeah, that's right yeah it's very strong also yeah. the blacksmith blade if you if you have some cash to drop but... yeah blacksmith blade is eternium, yeah. Than, yeah. Yeah, eternium yeah but uh, i wouldn't craft that in all honesty uh offhands get pretty simple once again um got a few options here uh, pretty much flame tongue is going to be fire destro you got orb it kind of fits the same thing as the next i feel like with orb like i don't want to go do you want to stack too much shadow damage with affliction for sure but as demo and and spell damage i mean a demo demo oh, and uh shadow not even for sure, really. Honestly, yeah. affliction not even for sure because you're still using emulate yeah i like well i don't use emulate as some ruin i use it as ua it depends on the fight though too and my mana mm. that's just me though i don't use emulate every time i play I think weird i just should i think i should <laughs> Yeah. Like Sometimes you I if I'm low, if I'm if my mana's fucked up, I'm not emulating. Personally, that's fair. That's just me. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, me. yeah. That's yeah. fair. Yeah. As, as some ruin, by the way. Yeah. Um, I go Cadgar's knapsack yeah. nine times out of ten. Uh, obviously, not if you're fire, but I go Cadgar's knapsack because I like to have that emulate damage just to further on the emulate right piggyback off it. I don't want to have too much things that are all shadow damage with frozen shadow wave the neck the offhand all that. What do you guys think? You guys I think Cadgar's is arguably the offhand to go to. For most specs, unless you're specifically fire, yeah, it's, yeah, 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 that's just what you should be running as any other spec. You should be running Cadgars. Uh, obviously, the flame tongue seal for fire, straight up. It's on and like just look at that. How much better it is than your other options, right? The fire offhand is a lot better. But I don't want anyone in chat or on YouTube to get the wrong idea. Uh, just because we're saying Cadgars is the optimal option, if you guys are not near phase one bis you're still lacking some of your crafted gear or you're lacking some tier pieces and you're lacking hit rating just because we're saying cadgars is good does not mean the jewel of infinite possibilities bad Thank you. jewel of infinite possibilities is also very very good but as you get more and more gear you don't really need 21 hit rating all that much it's a ton of hit rating and it's very easy for you to go over hit cap with good gear if you're running jewel of infinite mm -hmm. possibilities so yeah, that's why we're yeah. saying cadgars is good but don't sleep on jewel if you don't have good gear and you see this drop take it yeah of course also, Thank one, you, one, thing for one thing for jewel if you're tanking leo terras you're gonna use fire res gear which doesn't have it and jewel is gonna be amazing in that case mm-hmm there you go. Yeah. Thank you right. guys for yep. chiming in. I like that. I didn't even say that. Uh, JP, anything? Uh, no, I'm good. Yeah. Basically what Alive said. Uh, right. The offhand is just... The reason we're saying Cadgars is the offhand is just not really an efficient place to get a lot of hit. Where you can uh, do that in other pieces of gear. But like Alive said, if you have bad gear, you don't have all your crafted stuff, Jewel is a great option to gain a lot of hit. Oh, you know, just play a real spec, fire, and take Flame Tongue. Yeah, or that. <laughs> All right, what do we got left? Wands, right? Uh, yes, last and least wands. Someone take it from me. So, I feel like, uh, go ahead, you first, you first. Well, I mean, once <laughs> again, it's a it's a slot where it's if a you flex. fire, yeah, but like it's a flex slot. But if you fire, you have a very good option, and it's your good old firestone. So it's like straight up thirty damage. So that. yeah, I will say that uh, your Firestone as a Fire Warlock is technically your. Bis yeah, I forgot to put wand. that on there. I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry. Uh, Just ignore ignore the fact that I forgot about that. 
<laughs> obviously, that's again if you don't need to get gain hit on your wand. Obviously, if you need to gain hit on your wand, you're using Trisfall or Trisfall wand of Trisfall, yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah, I, it's pretty straightforward. Obviously, Iridar and the Black Stock are pretty dead even. I mean, the hero the, a little bit ahead. Yeah, the mag wand is a little bit better just because it has eleven intellect on it. But either one that you get is right. On, you know. Uh, do, do, by the way, Doomfinger is basically the the mag wand, but we have the stats. Mm -hmm. The reason right. I didn't put classic items in here is because I did a little poll and it was like ninety, like seven percent, like ninety two percent of the my YouTube community does didn't don't have any classic gear. So I was like, All right, I'm just leave it out. But yeah, that is a thank you for mentioning that. I have a question though. I don't play fire, which is why I completely forgot Firestone. I feel like Blackstock would be better than Firestone. Am I drunk? No. Uh, so, for for Fire Destro, uh, crit rating one crit rating is about 0.7 spell power. Okay. Right? So, okay. Okay. total Blackstock, you're talking about 28 point or 27.7 crit or yes. spell power yeah, equivalent, right? So enough. it's it yeah. it doesn't outweigh. Yeah. Okay, if it okay. had some Thank intellect you. on it or something, yeah, but. Uh, Wanda Fates Stone is, is good too. I think Wanda Fates has the eight hit on it instead of the nine. Uh, Wanda Fates yeah. is not Wanda better than Firestone, no. No, 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 it's not better than Firestone. It's actually worse than everything that you see. Yeah. <laughs> it's just good. I mean, I, I know I used to have it. Garbage. It's just that you, uh, no, it's 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 okay. Nether Core's it, Rod has one more hit rating, and that's from a normal. Just saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's the problem. Like from from Naxxramas, you have Doomfinger and Wanda Fate. Doomfinger replaced by Magteridon. And uh, and one of the fate is replaced by Alcatraz, mm -hmm. I think so, something like mm -hmm. that. So yeah, yeah like I've I've bad. seen like four, uh, no joke, three or four of these Eridon Eridor ones drop. Like I don't know the, the chance of that or whatever RNG, but these seem to be dropping. Where like none of the warlocks need them. It's like that. It's a popular one. Like you're gonna get those. Nobody cares about them really. So you, you can end up with one. And it's used to you like by the time it takes you to get into phase two, you can have a, a Karazhan weekly Karazhan. You can plug that eventually right like you can get that one from Aaron. it's good to, i like going in with both ones so that's why i don't play fire so i'm not speaking for fire but i also, like to use both wands one for trash one for bosses vice versa yeah, sorry just also one thing that i apparently i'm seeing in chat just to make sure so we are not a kid cap or burst class it's a trade-off so if you have like something that's that has hit but something that's clearly better don't just take the hit because oh i need to be hit cap i know it doesn't feel the best to resist like trust me i know i've been playing classic but uh definitely think of it in terms of uh equivalent spell power so some things like for instance we have a discussion on wonder fate in uh in the chat like if you have wonder fates like use firestone instead for instance if you fire there's little kind of things like that or for instance don't use a blue that has hit over something that's like clearly better but doesn't have it just to hit cap Right, and mm -hmm. to figure all that stuff out, I recommend getting into Sims, right, and seeing what your stat weights are and your equivalent spell power values for hit rating, crit rating, know what they're worth. For, for example, I'll, I'll just touch on why Wanda Fates is not better than Firestone, right? So for, even if you need all the hit, for Wanda Fates, you have, you have 8 hit on it, it's about 1.8 spell power for hit, maybe a little bit less. So you're looking at, I don't know, like 14... I don't know, 14 and a half spell power from the hit rating, right? And then you gain 12 from just raw spell power. So you're at 26 and a half spell power versus the 30 just that you already have on Firestone. So that's why the equivalent system is very important to understand how different stats affect your DPS. I mean, you could just put it in a really uh, blown up way where it's like, let's say you're at 12% hit rating and you need 13%. And there was a wand that gave you exactly 1% or a wand that gave you 100 spell power. There's just no world where you wouldn't take that 100 spell power because that 100 spell power is going to affect 98% mm -hmm. of your shadow bolts. Yeah. But the chance for that 1% hit rating to actually appear in your damage profile and make an impact is low. Is it still good? Yes. But the spell power will remain constant and always affect your damage. So it's just like in Classic. Even in Classic, if any of you guys in chat or on YouTube played Classic, you guys are all well aware that we didn't go for hit cap because it just wasn't good enough. And it's the same in TBC, and it's going to be the same pretty much forever. Does hit get more and more valuable as your character gets stronger and stronger? And do you get pushed more towards wanting hit rating? 
yes, the, the stronger your character is, the more powerful your kit is, the more important hit rating is going to be. But does it have this infinite value that will always outweigh absolutely everything in the world? No. no. Yep, that is correct. I mean, that's as, that's as deep as, into it as you can go. Just understand your stat weights, understand your character, understand why you're using certain pieces of gear. I think that the wand is our last piece of gear, right? So I think that's all we had planned to cover. Do we want to take questions now, or? I say we move on to questions. It looks right. like chat has been lighting Videos us up, up. With questions so far. Mm -hmm. it's, been, right. it's been a good pace. What do you guys got for us, chat? Any juicy ones? Let's see. Anything? We want to go to an hour, but we're an hour and a half, which is fine because we're vibing right now, talking about our favorite class ever. People with Saf and KT Trigger. KT Trigger is very good to use. You're going to use it a lot, but you're not going to find a lot of undead and demons in T5 besides like Leo's with Demon, and I think I'm missing one, but I don't remember the name of it. Uh, uh, you're not going to get Ilf. a lot of use out of it, though, you know what I mean? You what? Ilhoof. 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 No, no, yeah, I was talking about T5, yeah. Oh, no, uh, sorry, not T5. Um, yeah, yeah, it's Ilhoof and yeah, Kara. We'll and also, uh, right now, obviously, Mag is a demon. It's very strong against him. It's your best option. Well, uh, Mag, Mag depends on the t depends how long you take on on phase one. Yeah, it depends yeah. how long your ad phase is and your strategy. Uh, it's a trade off for sure. Yeah, yeah. Talk so, about tier five four piece bonus. That's for future episodes. But <laughs> that's the spicy topic right now. It's not good. Spoiler alert. Yeah, it's, it's not. ass. Spank, it's you not. know this game. You know this game more. You know Warlock's better than all of us in here, and you know it's ass. He just is trolling right now. <laughs> just a bait. Uh, I am who's the best warlock on stream right now? Though. Probably alive. He's got better parses than us, bro. He's 99 to 100 out. I'm only doesn't, a little 98 count. 99. Yeah, Demo doesn't count, bro. Oh, Demo doesn't count? <laughs> well, Yikes. Are you, so you're I'm, trying to tell me if you if he went Shadow Death Show, he wouldn't still get those parses? I'm only the top parser because I don't play Cringe Fire. That's the only reason. He, went, he, went, he wouldn't play Spicy. Shadow Death Show, though. He doesn't well, because you that. can't compete as Cringe Fire. Oh, okay. Ooh. Yo, you know what they said uh, to you, Abide? Or I mean, alive. They said, "Trust me, you're not that guy. You're not that guy." But <laughs> <laughs> all right, we underrated. got any actual questions? Oh, uh, underrated items it. to watch for in T5. Yes, uh, we're that's gonna be. We're gonna do a whole episode about T5 soon. Please discuss yeah, the value of Blade of Wizardry, explicit for AOE slash speed seed spam in comparison to Gruel. All right, so on seed spam. This, he's basically asking how much better is Blade of Wizardry than your Gruel Dagger, your Prince Dagger, or Gruel Sword, Prince Dagger for seed spam. I think for it depends, spam, on, it depends, depends on, on the health of the mob, yeah. It does, right? Uh, it depends how many seeds are going out, but typically, haste is king, procs are king for seed spam. Once you hit a certain amount of mobs, obviously, your spell power does nothing, and... Already, Seed has an extremely low spell power coefficient. I think it's like 14% or something. 22. So, 22. Yeah, 22, okay. You just want to so, make sure they crit. I mean, it, uh, before before AoE cap, it scales about as well with crit and with spell power. Just to give a, to give an idea. Yeah, but Haste is just... Well, Haste is, uh, Haste is even better than that. If it gains you, if it gains you cast, which is yeah. normally not that, that big of an issue because on long fight you can say, you can say it averages out, but on seed situation, generally speaking, you have like anywhere between like two to six, seven seeds, or three to six, seven seeds. So it really, really depends on how, on whether you can fit one more. Yeah, yeah I will say that I plan to use Quag's Eye and Blade of Wizardry in my AOE set for the rest of the game. That's how I strong think, it is. That's yeah, how I is. won't be using Blade of Wizardry for now because it's slightly too expensive for me. And, uh, but you know, I'm not going to use mean, it either. I'm a big fan of Haste and I like it a lot. Um, I, I think it's certainly, certainly good for Seed Spam. But, like, let's say you're stacking four mag ads or, or something along those lines. The Haste doesn't. It does. It, it, it adds a lot of DPS until you go Oom. And then when you get to the point where you oom and like live tap once or twice and then seed and then live tap and seed and live tap, it doesn't really give you all that much value. But if the mobs have low enough health where you can seed them down and they die before you go oom or like let's say you add a mana pot into that rotation and they die before you oom after the mana pot and demonic rune, then it's super, super good. But if they have a lot of health and it takes like 
multiple ooms and then life taps and ooms and life taps, that's when I start to lean towards not liking it so much. There's yeah. a question for you, Fire Runs, right there. Last one. I'm Fire Dash Show, but I've been debating going Shadow for a fight like Ilhoof since you're seeding. But my problem is I'm full Fire Base, so my Fire Gear is so much better than my Shadow Gear. And I'm wondering if that gear differential isn't worth a swap to Shadow. So, generally speaking, if you're seeding, you kind of want to swap to Shadow. On Hiloof specifically, I I tried the Hellfire, the Hellfire strat. Uh, let me tell you right now, it's garbage. <laughs> so, uh, so you do want to be, you do want to be Shadow. And uh, honestly, uh... even even if you're like full beast fire, due to the, due to how seed works, you can still put together a very good seed set, even for that boss. Basically, you slap four piece Oblivion, you get Quagsai, you get Nexus Horn, then you just compensate the hit pretty much here and there, and. You're done. That's literally just what you have to do. So, so you run some dungeons, get four PC Oblivion, done for your set. So for Ilhoff in general, even if you're wearing full Spellfire gear, you're going to do more damage just if you sack your Succubus and still wear full Spellfire. Just because of how poorly seed spell or scales with spell yeah, power, just... you're gaining way more from sacking a Succubus than actually changing your gear. So that's one fight where... Seed is extremely strong. You should change gears still. I'm not saying wear a spell fire and sack a succubus. I'm just saying you will gain more from sacking a succubus than wearing plus fire gear. Yeah, also, uh, I will say the real quick though, another way to solve that problem is more of an expensive way, but if you're fire dash, I don't care what anybody says, or shadow, you should have both sets to be honest. If you're fire, you can you get your other off pieces. You can get the pieces and put use in the background and then you'll be alright, right? So spell fire yeah, belt, girdle, gloves, whatever, you know, whatever gloves you can get. Right, yes. like I mean, I have you know. I have girdle crafted for tier five specifically progression on trash and stuff. Right, I'm not gonna use spell fire on trash, so I have girdle crafted. It's just something you need to build two sets. You need to be flexible if you're fire destro. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. One one thing. Sorry, one other question I've seen earlier on is like, what tier four items we want to uh, to use in tier five? Well, like, which one will we carry over specifically? I think that's gonna that. Definitely is of interest. So, what are your thoughts? Obviously, there's the two piece tier four, but there. Uh, we have two piece T four. You have a glove. You have your cloak. I mean, uh, you might be using your offhand if you're not using Fathom Stone. You'll be using Frozen yeah. Shadowy Boots. You can use Spell Strike Pants. Um, girdle Ruination will get replaced with Belt of Blasting, but you might be using Girdle for a while and your trinkets. Spellfire gloves are another big item. That oh you yeah, want sorry. To keep. Yeah, yeah. And also, also Spellfire in general, if you don't, if you're not lucky with uh, with the vestment of the Tea Witch. Yeah, so yeah, we'll talk about this on tier five. Yeah, yeah real, real short TLDR. Yeah, yeah. You don't you don't break full Spellfire until you get vestments, but that's all we're gonna say about that. I'm so. glad you answered that because I got I actually got asked that. That's like one of my most popular questions, yeah. and I don't ever know yeah. what to say. We'll <laughs> talk about that fire. in another episode. Yeah. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah, nice. I feel like there's i feel like me j paint ryu say uh, pretty much everyone here i think we're all super hyped to talk about tier five i, can't I know wait. i've been running a ton of sims and there's a there's a lot of different bosses where it's like oh this spec does slightly better on this boss this spec does slightly better on this boss but sadly that will be in a future episode so just make sure you guys keep tuning in for yep. these episodes and we certainly will be covering it because all four of us are super super hyped to talk about t5 mm -hmm. but for now, we're going to talk about phase one. Yep. And this, this episode is actually over. So if you guys want to go ahead and toss a live, I know you're streaming. Not as much, but you should stream more often. Go ahead and link your stuff in here because I don't know where to find it. I am going to be streaming tomorrow, actually, for the whole raid reset yeah. as the demo yeah, pump. There you go. So link it, link it, link it. Go ahead and toss a live. I know you're streaming. Uh oh, uh oh. Not much, but you My background noise. Sorry about that. Uh, Ryan, J Paint, you, got, you guys don't do anything yet, do you? Link some spreadsheets. Nah. Link something. Give us something. Find me in the Discord, man. Find him in the Warlock yeah. Discord, which will be posted don't, right after I'm alive. Post don't, Warlock don't Discord. Don't DM me, though. Don't DM me. I don't like that. <laughs> DM me. You guys can DM me. Don't worry. It gets flooded, but I try to answer them. People DM, people DM me all the time. You know, if if, if you do, I'm going to try to answer. Can't, can't guarantee I'll do it on a, on a timely manner, but, you know, doing my best. If, if you DM me, ask a very simple question, please. That Wait. it's either a yes or no. Uh, before we wrap up, I did have a question for you guys in here um so for episode three were we still planning to do the quad hot tub stream or 